Good evening and a very warm welcome from the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff. It has to be said, this is not the quarter-final lineup we anticipated. All the New Zealand supporters had Cardiff in their travel plans, but France did not expect to be here. And the French fans have spent the last week desperately trying to find tickets. We've already, of course, had Australia, England. The shock result there, a 12-10 win for England, for Johnny Wilkinson penalties. The only try of the match scored by Australia, by Lotte Tungiri, but um, nevertheless, England taking it to Australia and pulling off a real surprise victory. South Africa versus Fiji tomorrow with Argentina versus Scotland. But it's a strange situation here in Cardiff for France. They're the World Cup hosts, but unless they can find an inspired performance tonight, they're in grave danger of going out of their own tournament on a foreign field. Like England, they've improved considerably after a feeble start to this World Cup, but unlike England, they're facing the pre-tournament favourites, and there's no obvious weakness that they can exploit. With me, Jamie Salmon, of course, who had a dual international career, played for New Zealand and then returned to his native England and, and played for England. Jamie, real... Uh, Herculean task facing France here. Yes, it most certainly is. And I wondered if they've been um, encouraged by England's victory this afternoon because nobody really expected that. And certainly, I think I'm pretty safe to say, nobody expects France to really beat New Zealand tonight. But strange things have happened, as the semi-final of 1999 showed. And France have certainly had an extensive warm-up before the game this evening, so they're certainly up for it, but you never quite know, do you, John? No, you're never quite sure which France will turn up, but uh, if ever there was an incentive, then tonight the incentive is there. It is their tournament, uh, and they can't really contemplate uh, going out of it at this stage. The All Blacks arriving, Graham Henry, their coach. Big night, of course, for him too. And uh, that's the uniform the All Blacks will be playing in. Your team sailed through the pool stages. Have they been tested or stretched as much as you would have liked thus far? Probably not. But, uh, you know, we can't control a draw, and um, that's how it turned out. So, you just have to go on with from that. Now, the French, they appear set to kick to try and win territory, perhaps test your line out. What sort of test do you expect? Yeah, I think there'll be a certain amount of kicking. Um, I think it's sudden death. It's going to be a huge game out there. Both sides desperate to win. So, um, idea or not, for you people and the spectators, marvellous. Well, uh, New Zealand's biggest worry coming into this match was that they'd be without fly half Dan Carter, but he came through a fitness test on his injured calf and he will wear the number 10 jersey. They've gone for Mills Muliaina to partner Luke McAllister in the centre whilst Joe Roccafoco and Sidiveni Sivivatu are on the wings. Keith Robinson's fully fit again and replaces Chris Jack in the second row as New Zealand go for power in the pack. Well, it has to be said, uh, Jamie, as I was alluding to into the introduction, that uh, Cardiff, a sea of black. There are, really are thousands and thousands of All Black supporters here. And, of course, they were all sure they were coming to Cardiff. Yes, absolutely. They knew that uh, New Zealand were going to win the group. And uh, Cardiff was always their destination, whereas France was certainly not intending to come second in theirs. Hence why they're here. Interesting team selections, I think, from both sides. And uh, it'd be very interesting to see how it executes itself. Well, everything to play for their talisman, Sebastian Chabal. Uh, there's Joe Mazzo, the old centre I used to play against, and there's Bernard Laporte, the French coach. Mad Bernie, as they've taken to calling him in France for his uh, uh, pronouncements on certain things. But an absolutely huge night for them. It's hard to imagine they 
tournament hosted by France and no France in it from the quarter-final stage onwards. Cis plays at 10, assess his development for me through this tournament. I think there's only, there's only one guy that is almost as cool as he is and that doesn't talk and that's nice and easy and that's myself. And, and Lionel is, is laid back, he's looking forward to it very much, we've had a bit of a chat today and um, I think you're going to see a very good performance by Lionel Boxers tonight. Are you confident? Yeah, very confident. We're looking, we're looking forward, England have done it against Australia. We're looking forward to playing England in the semi-final in Paris and getting his own back for 2003. Well, Dave Ellis, with his rugby league background, huge responsibility. Bernard Laporte's made no bones about his tactics. He selected a 15 to play for field position, so controversially, he's picked Damien Try, usually a centre at fullback, because of his kicking ability, and 21-year-old Lionel Boxis, who also has a siege gun boot, is selected at fly half. Captain Rafael Ibanez, Peter de Villiers, and Fabian Pelous all played in that epic 1999 semi-final at Twickenham. Richie McCaw, there we are. The New Zealand captain and the man who's taken over in this tournament uh, when he's not been playing, Jerry Collins from Wellington. Anton Oliver, the uh, one person in the starting 15 for New Zealand who played in that 1999 uh, semi-final at Twickenham where France looked dead and buried at half-time and then staged a wonderful second-half comeback to beat the All Blacks 43-31 and go through to the final. That, Jamie, in a way, was exactly an example of what we were saying. That second half in 1999, France looked irresistible, uh, and yet they couldn't carry that through into the final that year. No, indeed, they could not. And uh, it was a bit like 87 as well, where, where they had an epic against Australia in the semi-final and, and fell short. And, of course, in 99, as you rightly said, I think it was 24-10 down, something like that they were at half-time or just after. So, if they go down tonight, perhaps they'll still believe. Well, there, uh, Wayne Barnes, the referee, real youngster, he's only 27 himself. And you've got the strange situation where the French skipper, Raphael Ibanez, at 34, is seven years older than the referee. Yeah, but the referee's a barrister. Yeah, he is indeed. He's a, uh, a chatty lad. I got to know him quite well on the seventh circuit over a, a few years, cut his teeth there. And there is the New Zealand change strip. Numerous discussions have been going on over the past few days to try and make sure we didn't get a repeat of the situation we had in Scotland, where it was so difficult to actually tell between the two teams. And uh, hopefully we've got a solution that works this time. There's uh, New Zealand with their predominantly grey silver tops and uh, black shorts. And there's the French 15, as you can see, they'll play in their blue tops, but they have white shorts on. And uh, it's black socks and uh, blue and white socks. So I, I think we're going to be better off than we were in Scotland, certainly. It's certainly better. You're absolutely right there, that, that's for sure. I think France will be very pleased to wear their deep, dark blue, as they call it. I don't think it'll phase New Zealand too much. Yes, they'd like to have worn the the real all-black top, I'm sure, but they knew that coming in, they'll lose the toss occasionally, so I can't see uh, them being phased by that at all. Well, a huge night for all the players, of course, but uh, whereas New Zealand's progress has been calm and assured and every bit as uh, measured as we would have expected, 76-14 against Italy, 108-13 against Portugal, 40-0 against Scotland, 85-8 against Romania, over 300 points in the full stages, a record in itself. France started off with that uh, defeat, 17-12 to Argentina. 
We then uh, clawed it all back, beating uh, Georgia 64-7, 87-10 Namibia, and 25-3 uh, against Ireland. Really never allowed Ireland into the game. Well, there is certainly a lot more New Zealand support here in the stadium. A fantastic atmosphere. The roof, of course, closed here at the Millennium Stadium. It was agreed before the World Cup began that all the matches would uh, be staged under the roof. So here we go with the anthems. band of all black supporters all up for it tonight oh, the Marseillaise Zealand lineup: McDonald at fullback, Rokathoka and Sivivatu on the wing, Muliaina, McAllister, the centres, and Carter does make it at uh, fly half. Richie McCaw, captains from number seven, and the semi surprise Robinson in at uh, four, partnering Ali Williams in the second row. And of course, the French lining up right on the halfway line to take up the challenge of the Hacker. Right in their faces.
much that even before it all began. There is the French 15. Boutsis there, the young fly half, but with a siege gun boot. And the big surprise, Damien Trey, normally a centre. Big man and big boot back there at fullback. Josian Amati is the pairing in the centres. And uh, Claire and Heymans, who had that disastrous game at fullback, are on the wings. And Wayne Barnes, the English referee. Cappers, can you hear me? He really more. has had a, a meteoric rise up the refereeing ranks. An English touch judge as well in Tony Spreadbury with uh, Jonathan Kaplan from South Africa. And uh, Lutzis launches it high. Play on! Well, a bit of a, a, bit of a fumble there. Away, move, Blue. Nerves perhaps going to both sides. Back to Carter. That uh, very, very educated left boot. Great power in that one too. There certainly is. We can safely say that France have accepted the challenge, having seen the Harker at first hand. It wasn't a great collection from the kickoff by New Zealand, but Carter has restored order. So the all-important first line out and. Uh, there's uh, Raphael Ibanez, uh, the French captain. It's essential that he finds his man. And uh, taken by the number Thank eight, you. Julien Bonner. Yeah. Big I'm drive new. from the Don't French back, just him. trying to clear it out. Back feet, stay down. And uh, one of the... There you go, there's the ball. Things we noted in this afternoon's game uh, Lots of bodies. between You're Australia okay, and England was the way England attacked the breakdown much harder That's than they've good. been Just doing. Now, away. New Zealand have had it all their own way, Jamie, until this point in the tournament. I fancy that France are going to target to that area closer to, to really play. try and Blue cause closer. Yes, Blue they can closer. upset Kelleher at scrum half as much as they possibly can, which therefore in turn is going to upset Carter at fly half. First scrum tonight, John. Interesting how they go. Steady. Decent goal for the French. Wait, and six. Thank you. Long clearance. McDonald. He holds it high and goes on the chase. Well, not forward there by Rodney Soyalu. Off your man. He he tried to claim he hadn't knocked on, but it's quite clear. Good scrummage. Good first scrummage. Very Thank good kick by McDonald, the New Zealand fullback. They'll certainly test out try. He hasn't played a lot at, at fullback. And he could expect a bit of a, a bombardment, and he's lucky there's no wind in the stadium. Yeah, interestingly, that was uh, Boxis who went for that one, not Trey. And a neat little uh, rubber through there from Elisalde, who's also got a very, very good kicking game. And. Uh, Full on, please, for the rest of the game, okay. Interesting tactically so far, everything going, I think, uh, to plan as far as the French are concerned, and New Zealand haven't really had the chance to launch an attack at them yet. One receiver. I think if New Zealand do get their chance, they will go wide, they will look to spread this French side. Gary Collins, the flanker, down at the front of the line-out, coming up with the ball for New Zealand. Barnes making himself absolutely clear, side. out of the way, blue. Nicely taken uh, by Vincent Clair. And there's a turnover, New Zealand now, it's dangerous, broken field. They've got three on two out here, but Carter can't get the ball away. In goes uh, Heymans to try and uh, steal it. And it's a great steal, the French have got it, the French have it. Big turnover for them. And that will give them confidence. Try with his uh, big right boot and uh, a good touch back into the New Zealand half. Yes, it certainly was. And New Zealand are normally so clinical from turnover ball. And that time they, they got broken down by the French and they stole the ball too. So France will be quietly confident. I know it's very early days, only four minutes gone, but they've, they've certainly held their own and been very competitive. 
confidence a massive thing. Richie McCaw in the scrum half position. Sayalu taps it off the front. It's not good ball though. And uh, as Woodcock tried to put it back, the French were through on him. What's them there, please, Jonathan? Carter That's okay, spreaders, takes inside. it uh, casually. And uh, Serge Betson, I think, is down and immediate concern. Toulouse rushes up. And uh, they're calling, uh, I, I think, uh, Ibanez is signalling to the medical men that he might have swallowed his tongue. Convulsions there. I must release that uh, mouth guard and the tongue. Yes, indeed, and uh, it was the tackle on Rokothoko was uh, which caused this. This is Rokothoko coming round. There's Betson there, number six. And that's where he took it. And uh, they're calling for a stretcher straight away. Bad news for France. Bad news for, um, obviously, Serge Betson. Let's just hope that they uh, have managed to um, free his air passage. Well, he looks, uh, he looks a little bit better now, thank goodness. He's just cradling his head, but he appears to be breathing normally. And I think that was the, the first concern, that he swallowed his tongue and, and blocked the, the air passage. But it does look as if uh, Betson's game might be over. Oh, and it's the knee. Totally accidental, but the knee coming in was what did the damage. It wasn't the initial impact on the tackle. There's Arinordiki, Imanel Arinordiki, who will be the replacement if he's needed. One of these situations, sometimes it looks absolutely terrible, and uh, then when they've actually sorted everything out, that um, he might be surprise us all by getting up and going on. In fact, uh, he's sitting up at this stage. Amazingly tough man, Serge Betson. He certainly is, and I suspect he wants to carry on, but I think sense will prevail and that he should leave the field. And allow Harrod Nordicke to come on and have to leave the field for the rest of the match. It's not a blood injury, although it might be. He might have got a bang in there as well, but I suspect that'll be the end of his night. Well, good to see him sitting up, looking round. He's obviously pretty well compassment, and it is just a question now, I think, of assessing whether he could be fit to carry on or whether he's got to go off. Aaron Ordecke raring to go, the, uh, the bass boy, and um, Wayne Barnes, the referee, I can hear saying, the doctor's telling me this player needs to go off. Well, there seems to be two thoughts here, doesn't there? Whether it's the French physio saying, let's give it a go for a while, the doctor's pretty adamant he should go, and I would have thought the doctor had the final say. But look at Serge Betchen there, he, he's not a well man, he's been on the ground for some time now, and he doesn't, you know, he understandably looks rather dizzy. Yeah, the veteran, this is his 62nd cap. Now, it's just a question... I mean, he will not want to go off, but the player doesn't always know best in this situation. Oh, and he looks as if his legs are gone. He can't play on, surely. Well, that's not the walk of uh, a fit man, is it? No, it certainly isn't. And um, I'm afraid to say if it's concussion, that could be his tournament run if France were successful tonight. Because that's normally a two, three week mandatory period out of the game. I know there is a bit of poetic licence and they talk about being temporarily dazed, but I'd argue that whether that was the case there. Well, now it's, they've gone away from the compulsory period out and they actually do scans that uh, determine whether the man is fit or not. But uh, it's a pretty bad one and I think you might well be right, Jamie. Uh, well, he's certainly out of this game, but thank goodness it's nothing more serious than that. And Aaron Ordecke, it has to be said, a very athletic, different sort of player, but a very, very good replacement to have. 
He's OK, he's the ball carrier. In goes the drive, and France... ..getting a penalty, not getting away from the tackled man. I want you away more quickly than that, says the referee. I think that was probably uh, Tony Woodcock. Props have a, a particular liking for wrapping themselves around the ball and just staying there and saying, well, I couldn't do anything about it. Indeed so, as we see the Richie McCraw on the floor. Just one thing as this line-out comes up, John. Howard Nordicke coming on the pitch increases France's line-out options considerably and New Zealand are not the biggest at the back. It certainly gives France another option. It does indeed. He played most of his rugby at number eight, but he can operate really well at uh, six, and he's a very, very athletic player. Hasn't perhaps got quite the strength and power of Betson. Immediately brought into the line-out at the front. Aaron Ordeke becomes the, the target man. And uh, New Zealand got the first drive on. Now uh, France have got to drive back again. Real explosion out of there. Bit of old-fashioned New Zealand-style rucking. And a little chance here for France to exercise. Josian goes back inside. Back to... Try... Oh, and it just scrapes the left-hand post. It was just wide from Damien Trey. He has one drop goal already, to his credit, in uh, international rugby. But that was not playing fullback. But uh, he was close to giving France the lead there. I think good winger? option. Get points on the board. Start asking questions to the All Blacks. No questions have really been asked to the All Blacks. They've never been behind, really. So that's good tactics from France. Let's build a scoreboard. Advantage. Well, all the big Great New Zealanders, ball. Soyalu and uh, Rokathoko, jumping for it. They all missed it, and little Elisalda almost came up work. with it. Damion Trey puts it long. He doesn't want a, a huge bounce, gets the right there. bounce. No, Just no pops up. Carter has it. He's inside, spreaders. Huge kick, but this time he fails to find touch. Let him run. Side again. And that time the kicker was McAllister, and he does find touch. Just inside the French half. Well, this is the game that Laporte was predicting to play. Play very much a kicking game, frustrate New Zealand, make sure you stay disciplined, stay in control, try and play the game in their half. So, so far it's working because France haven't run the ball at all and New Zealand have only run it from a turnover. Yeah, the important thing is that they kick well if they're going to do it, because they can't afford to give them broken field to run back at them. Advantage, seven off your feet, playing the ball. And New Zealand, McCaw no. has been penalised. Richie Number McCaw seven, off his feet. Make a positive effort. Number seven. Get back. And another penalty to France. I think they'll be quite happy with things, apart from, of course, the Betson injury. Uh, eight minutes gone, and they've not been under too much pressure, and as you say, Jamie, I think their confidence will grow, and if they can just play some rugby for the first you did everything dozen right, minutes, you 15 board, minutes, I think then they'll grow and try and take it to another stage. That's good. Well, good indeed, and, and I think territorially France are probably just shading it. Yeah, New Zealand it. haven't got anywhere near the French 22, so if Ibanez can find his man, catch and drive, move it on, and as soon as I say that, it all goes pear-shaped. And away, Blue! Well, it was not a very accurate tap, but uh, New Zealand have won the French throw. Nice little chip ahead. Can they come up with it again? Knocked on the second time, if not the first time. Well, the referee says it wasn't, but uh, I clearly saw a knock on there. Oh, no. Rugby, away. two wrongs don't make a right. Carter with the kick. That's an easy. Thank you, Jets. Again, not into touch. Heyman's the kick and go. Timed his run really well. And again, they're deep in the New Zealand half, and New Zealand not really with anywhere to go. Back comes Heyman's. Wait, please. Yes, run five. 
this is Leon McDonald. Running hard at the holes. Anton Oliver. Kelleher to Carter, to Collins out in the centre. Just for a moment, something opening up on the left. Collins again Out doing way, good work. Don't dive in, no! Tion told to get off the ball, he does so. And New Zealand. Tiny men up in the middle, and Kelleher. The little dummy nearly went himself. Sayalu. Oliver takes it on into the 22. Now the first real sustained attack by the New Zealanders. Muliaina setting it up again. Carter comes across to go left. Oh, but nobody wanted the par. Collins retrieves it. The French have him, though. Carter. Back it comes to McDonald. And the tackles go in hard, he's forced back, he does well though, sets it up again, and New Zealand still have it. This time Soyalo to Rokathoko, that's Sivivatu, now they've suddenly got men over, they do this so well. Putting it away was Williams, the chip to Collins, hacked back into the uh, New Zealand half. And uh, it's Vincent Clerc who's got to put everybody on side, he does that into the open spaces. Oh, it beautifully picked up uh, by McAllister. Suddenly New Zealand cutting loose, that's Muliaina. Carter, Sayalu, Sayalu getting past one, but uh, then uh, Dusatwa gets to him. Oh, and Rokathoko almost getting past his man, and that time... The New Zealand uh, attack was too fierce and the French give away a penalty almost in front of the posts. What, what an extraordinary passage of play. It went through so many phases and eventually something had to give. The tackling and defence of France was outstanding. They didn't miss many, New Zealand didn't make any clear breaks, but New Zealand had the opportunity to get points on the board. And I think it was uh, the veteran, the most capped French player of all time, Fabien Pelouse, who, uh, who was the offender there, wouldn't, didn't get away from the ball having made the tackle. Wayne Barnes just telling the New Zealand players, don't take it into your own hands, I'll referee it, you've got your penalty, I can see it. Simple, simple kick. Paul Carter. Well, he had 668 points for New Zealand. He's now got 671. 3-0 to New Zealand. Well, just for their ability to retain the ball for such long period, New Zealand deserved to go ahead. Three points on the board. France's defence was excellent, as I said. Can they bounce back, though? How much is this going to take out of them? Lovely kick-off from Boxis, but it's New Zealand who come up with it. Bad feet, make sure. Thank you. Carter off the outside of the left boot and uh, not the touch he was looking for. So a line out to France on the New Zealand 10-metre line. I wasn't sure last time, but makes sure Yes, good result for France, throws, that. You know Very that. unlike Daniel Carty, he's been striking the ball well, right both in practice two. and in the first 15 minutes or so of this before. game. He's found good distance with his touch finders. This gives Mr. France the opportunity to spend some time in the New Zealand half. Graham Henry said yesterday in the press conference, he was asked how Dan Carter's kicking, because, of course, he's had this calf injury that has uh, limited the amount of practice he could go for. And he said beautifully. But uh, France now just trying to work it down the right side. They come back to the left. Oh, a little dart inside from David Marti. 
ducked one, but there were more coming. They protected the ball well, though. Elisalda. Back three, captain. Gets it back to uh, Josian. Leon McDonald, well, that was a little forward pass missed by the officials. The crowd picked up on it, but they got away with it. They certainly got away with it. Looked very adjacent to me, the pass from Sibivatu. But McDonald made his touch. He's a solid fullback, McDonald. He really is. He does the basics extremely well, and he's going to have to catch a few high ones tonight. And he's done that yeah, very well indeed so far. Yeah, one of those uh, efficient players, not. Uh, not one of the sort of flashy star-rated players in the side, McDonald. Played in the 2003 World Cup most of the time in the centre, but he really is a super rugby player. Oh, and a lovely, wonderful cut through from the Callister. Another terrific hug. In comes Callagher in support, up to the five metres from the French line, and Luke McAllister can do that. Knock on, that's an advantage, but only that. And the charge now. Did he get in? And it was Ali Williams, I think, was it? I think he thinks he's got that. The big second row lurking on the wing. That's not the first try he scored like that. Yes or no? Well, it's the fast Goliath that puts him in. That's Tony Spreadbury, the touch judge, right by the goalpost. In comes the tackle. Is his right foot in touch there? I think he's in touch. I'm not. That's not a try. I don't believe. No way. No. Very clearly not a try. In fact, the All Blacks have just had a look up at the big screen, and they're all running back from the halfway position. They know that this is going to go against them. Yes, the right foot is clearly in touch. What a great break though by McAllister up the middle. Big worries for France on their midfield defence. Major gap in there, and it nearly got the first okay, try of the evening. Blue, is that correct? I have to line say, yet again, I am amazed no that the touch line judge couldn't blue, swap that. Well, they've been consistent, Chris, certainly. They have referred it upstairs <laughs> more times than not, haven't Wait, they? What, what is still off? Are you, are you in or not? Taken uh, by Bonaire and France escape. Wait, please, go. And a terrific kick there from Boxy. He's quickly Wait, taken though. McDonald has it. The chance to counter. Falls over. Stay on, thank you. Kelleher. McCaw in at the fly half position. Carter in the centre. Oh, and releases McAllister. And McAllister again. Collins, beautifully done, and does he get over? Yes, McAllister, I think, got in. Remember, when he's tackled short, he's allowed to place it immediately, and that was certainly immediate. First try to New Zealand, and suddenly they appear to have moved up a gear. Terrific work from them, and 8-0 uh, they lead. Well, McAllister had given France one warning just a couple of minutes before. His angle was terrific. He came in on a short ball on the angle. And he picked up Jerry Collins and also supported him. What a great piece of play by the centre. There's Collins as well. And McAllister shouting for it. And that's a fine try. On the line is definitely a try. Well played, New Zealand, in particular McAllister. Here's uh, seventh try for New Zealand, and uh, he'll be playing his rugby in the English Premiership after this Rugby World Cup is over. Only 24 years old, but he signed uh, a two-year contract with Sale. Carter adds the conversion, and New Zealand lead. Ten points, 2-0, over France in this second quarter final. Well, ominous signs for France and ominous for Josion and Marty in the midfield for France. They're not picking up McAllister at all. They've got to close that gap if they're going to have any chance in this game. Furthermore, I think France have got to score next. They've got to restore a bit of confidence and get something on the board. Play off. No hands! 
McCaw gathers the kickoff. Back to uh, McDonald. Well, he finds touch, not as long as he'd have liked, I think, but uh, the safety of touch was what he was after first. Typical New Zealand, suddenly in a couple of minutes they score ten points. You know, bang, bang, just play quickly, put you to the sword, don't they? And they really did find a cutting edge there through the middle, as you said, Jamie, on a couple of occasions. It wasn't just one slip, they suddenly... Uh, quick passes, beautiful angles, changing the lines of running, and they created those holes. Aaron Ordecky again at the line-out for France. Ibanez, the skipper, Not in the, the back. They try to get the drive two. going. Elisalde dictating when it comes. Hands away! Stand up, gentlemen, nice and easy. Look, sees that uh, that's too high and not far enough. All brought up. Nicely taken uh, in by Ali Williams. Carter to the danger again. McAllister gets it to McDonald. Rockathoko. That's Muliaina. Thank you for Kelleher. Carter picks it off his toes beautifully and then. Lovely uh, little wrap around forward pass, says the referee. But it was that was nice to see. I mean, a prop like Carl Heyman there just trying the little pass. Okay, it went forward, but uh, he almost put his man free. Yes, he certainly got a death touch of hand. Please. He was a bit unlucky because it was Jonathan Kaplan, Kaplan, the touch judge, that spotted it, touch. not Wayne Barnes. Haven't had many scrums. This is an area that could test New Zealand. They haven't been tested at all yeah, okay. in the tournament so far. Thank you. And Make France sure are a good scrummaging unit. Can they obviously secure their own ball, which is what it is now, yeah, but also disrupt it when New Zealand have got the foot in? Referee just uh, moving them in field of shade. He's going to put it in again. Sylvia French Stand put in. Relax. We're putting in the same ball again. Because I'm not sure if you ran around or not, and I don't want to guess, so we're going to take the same ball. I think the interesting thing there is also Kelleher and Elisard. It's, it's going to be French putting. And that's Kelleher pushes El Assad out the way. And that's straight. been very prevalent this World straight. Cup. But first and foremost, it's got to be a solid scrum to get some decent ball. Stay on seven. That's a better scrum for France. Bouxis puts it wide this time as they looked for the uh, the kick. David Marty provides the kick instead, and it really uh, didn't test uh, New Zealand in any sort of way. Out of ten. Muliaina, Boksis gets to him. Did well, Sivivatu tries to recover it. And away! I think that's Rokathoko right over there on the, uh, on the wrong wing. He's inside. Run back by uh, Vincent Clair. Inside again, spread his foot on the line. Wait! Now, He's passed onside. This is a Damien try. He's got good pace when he's in full flow, and he's a big man. Now, knocked forward there by New Zealand. The communications break down, I think, between McDonald and Kelleher. Well, extraordinary at this level that Kelleher should go for this ball because the man coming forward, which is McDonald, always takes it. Always takes it. The man coming back goes in, to, in behind to support the fullback. So now an opportunity for France. They're put in. They've won that little kicking exchange. They've obviously been banned from running it inside their own half. What can they do from here? Touch. Balls engaged. Middle. six. Right, another. Another good scrum. Well, New Zealand 
rucking hard coming over the you top. You yourself on the wrong side of the door. You make yourself liable to penalty. Number six. Quite one clear side. from uh, Wayne Barnes. The man penalised Jerry Collins. Of course you can. You get Come yourself on the wrong side of the ball, he says. Okay. Now he's telling him he's got to, I think, once he's down there now, get away. And he's off his feet there. Yes, I would argue he deliberately put himself there. He'd made the tackle, hadn't he? Aaron Nordic, he was on the ground. Totally unnecessary from Collins. He knows that this is kicking area. Why do it? It's not as if the French backs have threatened to burst holes through the New Thanks, Zealand defence. Right. France trailing. And Boxis now with the chance. And he's missed it on the left post. Despair on his face for a moment. I think he realised how important that was to just get France going. Yes, they've had one drop goal now, one penalty okay. attempt. No scores. Tricky, 22 from New Zealand. Quick one, though. Could be away here. Muliaina just uh, making sure it's Inside. quality ball that goes back to Carter. That's clear. Let him run! He chips over the back. Oh, it's very accurate. What a good kick from Vincent Clerc. And uh, he was unlucky that that didn't actually go into touch in the 22. It'll be a 22 dropout. They relax there for a moment. Richie McCaw had the chance to take that one quickly. Decided against it in the end. France have somehow just got to keep down on this 22 area for five or six minutes, get through three or four or five phases and ask questions again of New Zealand. They're just not spending enough time in their half at the moment. They're allowing New Zealand to relieve the pressure through Carter's big boot. No more messing around, says the referee. Well, that went off blue, but nobody was there to actually follow it up, so New Zealand come away with it. Nicely done by Heymans to Damien Trey. Trey with that big right boot and uh, gets it into touch. Quickly taken. Touch judge Tony Spreadbury saying it went into touch before Sivivatu touched it, so it was a New Zealand throw. Carter. This time just pops it and in goes the big drive. And now hands four! Kelleher goes burrowing for the ball. McAllister. Stand up, gentlemen. Try. Wait, please. Puts it deep. Oh, for a great kick. Absolutely no angle at all. Put it straight down the tram lines and then got a terrific bounce. Well, that's why Laporte put him there for his kicking game. That was McDonald. He didn't really have an option. He didn't expect a, a kick of that trajectory, I'm sure, to come at him. Now then, this is what I mean. France are back there again, but they, they keep getting out and then back. They've just got to stay here for some some period of time, they're going to pinch a New Zealand line-out ball. Just try and stay around this area. Wilson Croix and Ibanez are swapping positions. Ibanez is the, the acting scrum half, the hooker. That's right. Tony Spreadbury had a good look, but decided to allow it. And there's the kick from Kelleher. It's a good one again. Sivivatu bearing down on his man, and he got him. France looking after the ball well, though, protecting it. And a little chance here now, but. Uh, no thoughts, in straight away went the kick. Let him run! McDonald puts it back. <laughs> and New Zealand win the kicking game. Thanks, JJ. 
Well, I don't honestly know that Laporte has banned France from running in their own half, but it certainly appears that way. Normally, you would expect them to no problem, okay, certainly have a go line. a couple of times. Continuation, play. <whistles> Two man. Numbers, please, Blue. Another really good take from Ali Williams. Advantage. And uh, he hadn't uh, got back on side, so it's an uh, advantage to New Zealand. They're uh, really running a ball. They'll go back for the penalty. And back they go. Dusa Twa was the man. He made one tackle that was legal, then didn't get back on side before he made the second one. No, and suddenly New Zealand have a penalty. France have really been leading it for the last five or ten minutes. And suddenly New Zealand get the benefit of a penalty, and that's the incident there. But it'd be typical for Carter to kick it, and it's 13-0, and New Zealand, you can't honestly say, have done a lot since they went 10-0 up. No, that... Uh, one superb little passage, but they just sparred really for the uh, the last five minutes or so. But uh, France not really able to make many dents. Great list, 13. Thank you. Carter now well within his range. It's only about 43 meters. The roof closed. No wind. Conditions for kicking just about perfect. Half an hour gone. New Zealand leading 10-0. And France staring down the barrel. He doesn't often miss those. And Carter on target. New Zealand 13, France naught. Well, somebody's going to have to scratch their heads and come up with an answer within the French camp. Can they carry, carry on? with this kicking game they're playing. They're coming second, comfortably, on the scoreboard. So somebody's going to have to make a decision fairly soon. I don't think that they, if they carry on like this, they've got any chance of winning the game. Well, a mistake there by the old blacks. But that was really well done by Kelleher. Just batted the ball away to uh, Rokathoko, and that gave them the vital seconds to recover. Boxis gets it into Heymans. Kelleher did well, wrapped up in the end by uh, Julian Bonner. <coughs> Maliaina is so cool. Just waited for that one to bounce. Rokathoko. No hands. It's good. Carter got quick feet when he needs them. Nipped out of that one really nicely. Now try. Let him run. Tries to put it back into the corner. And now what's he going to give? It's gone out over the dead ball line for a moment. Referee Wayne Barnes was uh, holding his arm out, but he's decided there was nothing wrong. So that's a poor, poor kick, and it's a scrum to New Zealand back in the French half. And a gift, a gift for New Zealand. What I mentioned before, I don't think this kicking game is working. Somebody's going to have to change it. They've got to not chance their That's arm, blue, blue, just do blue, what blue, the blue, French are capable of doing, and doing some counter-attacking, getting behind the ball carrier, and making New Zealand make some tackles. Willie Aina and McAllister haven't been asked any questions at all in the midfield about whether they can tackle or not. Feet just slipped, feet just slipped away, it's the same ball. Stand up, please. Stand up. Blue, bind on the second row. Bind on the second row. Because that's the law. Crouch. Touch. Balls. Engage. Good scrum from New Zealand. They got some pressure on there. Back comes McAllister. Soyalu's at, on his shoulder. Adds feet. On goes the drive from Carl Heyman. Collins, 
Man over, Sivivatu out there, they couldn't get it to him. Tackle stole the ball! And uh, France come away with it. Now, he thought about kicking again, but uh, suddenly the shout came that there were men on. They made a little bit of a mess of it, but I... And uh, Wayne Barnes has given France a penalty for an incident across on the other side. The touch judge here, Jonathan Kaplan, has also stepped in. I don't know what that one's all about, but he's... Uh, we could get a reversal here if we're not careful. I thought it was Muli Aina came in with a strong arm. It was my, my thought that, interesting what Kaplan says here. Yeah, just the penalty, whichever one you want. OK, well, Kemi is more advanced. Did you get a number? I just talked to the captain. Seven. OK, we've just got a late hit by number eight of them and number nine, no need. High tackle here, just discipline, it's been very good till now. So just have a word if you would. I think uh, you're absolutely right, Jamie. You just said there was a high tackle over here. That was okay. the Muliaina one. But there was a late hit uh, by Rodney Soyalu. It's good and, not to react. Uh, he was already going back for a penalty on that. <laughs> not fair, is it? Number eight on scrum half. No, I, I support LSR 100% there, <laughs> I do, not, not fair at all. Better kick from France, they actually ran a ball from their own half, so maybe things are changing now. Captain Ibanez, can you find your man? Can you put some pressure on this New Zealand side? And can you ask some questions about their defensive capability? It will be interesting to see what they try and do. I mean, it's not as if they haven't got any penetration midfield. Yannick Josion, the formidable centre, Oh, and uh, the throw was poor, it was never going to reach Pelouse, who was the intended target. But they get another chance. Well, he's got a second bite of the cherry because the kick didn't go terribly far and he's there or thereabouts where he was before, but he's going to have to... What does he do now? Change the call, go to the back, go to the front, because the middle didn't work. He did exactly that, uh, that was Thiel. And a uh, big charge from Thierry Doucetois. They've got a second phase. Suddenly running with a lot more purpose, Davi Marti. And uh, New Zealand offside. Advantage to Blue, so Josion knows that he's got a chance. Well, he didn't Number give them another chance. Offside, now they've got a really good chance of getting points on the board. I'm sure they'll go for goal. Pretty simple kick. About... Uh, only 10 metres to the left side of the post and only about uh, 30 metres out. Yes, absolutely right, John. They've got to get points on the board this half. They've got to go in with something to give them a bit of a fillip. But better play then from Prats, wasn't it? And interestingly, it's little Elisalda who's uh, got the ball and is going to take this kick at goal, not Lionel Boxis. Uh, Elisalda... Got 190 points for France. Has often taken on the uh, the kicking duties, and he's got um, 42 points in this Rugby World Cup already. Oh, and he has missed it on the right post. Nothing working for France. He almost appeared to rush that one. Well, it was always going to be a tough assignment. There, uh, Monsieur Sarkozy, the French president, with the French president of the rugby union. La Passe, Bernard La Passe, and uh, neither of them with a smile on their face. Right, try, hoist that one high, could be a useful one. And it uh, was Kelleher actually running a block there for his... Receiver. Elisalde just flicks it through, beautifully picked off though by Leon McDonald. Aronodiki gets to it. That's way blue! Don't strand on him, no knee! It's still in, still in. Just stay there, right? No problem. Just move you on. Just stay there. Thank, thanks, fella. Inside. Carter with the the kick. Gathered in by Buxis. Hoists it, doesn't chase it with any real conviction himself, and McDonald 
has an easy catch. Again, Heyman ran a little block for him. Got away with it there. That's off the head, and uh, it was Aaron Ordecke getting in there. Now going for it was Heyman's. He sets it up for the French. Palouse. Oh, and if that had gone on to the right, there was perhaps an overlap, but they've cut back inside. Elisal, now they come left. Claire, and now they've got men, but the pass was poor. Heyman's picked it up. Strong little runner, goes again. But two chances there, really wasted by France. Josian to his skipper. Set up. Oh, and it's, uh, it's stolen. Keller held. France getting in there. It's still in. That's still in, 40. Don't go in. 40, back Kelleher clears it. This time to Carter. Little chip wide. Well, that was, <laughs> you think, unnecessarily risky. New Zealand could have put themselves in trouble. The rewards would have been huge if it worked. But really, I... Not the sort of risk that they're usually renowned for taking, Jamie. Not in the 39th minutes of the first half, when you're not holding on against much, but much What's better passage of play from France. They're beginning to ask questions. They should have done it a bit earlier, but they're finally getting round with it. Is that correct? 43, thank you. It's a hook. And Ibanez is uh, down and receiving treatment, the French skipper. Plays his rugby, of course, at uh, London Wasps. It'd be interesting what Bernard Laporte, the French coach, does at half-time. Does he make a couple of changes? Does he change it tactically? Does he allow some freedom to the likes of Try, Clerk, Heyman's on the wing? to express themselves. So I think that's the only way they're going to challenge the All Blacks, is to keep asking the All Blacks questions in defence. Well, of course, he's got um, guys like Poitrano on the bench, who is much more of a running fullback, and uh, he might decide to, to make wholesale changes and go for it there. Or we could, of course, see a repeat of 99, and they come out as a completely different team in the second half. But a penalty to France. Relax, go away. Right on the stroke of half-time. And uh, Ali Williams, the man penalised, told to uh, get out of it and retreat, didn't do it, and therefore got penalised. Thanks, thanks, Chris. Yeah, do as you're thanks, told Chris. in your own half, but otherwise you risk costing your team points. Now, I wonder who's going to take this one, John? Well, it looks like Bogues, he's, he's, the, he's the big kicker. And then they went for accuracy through El and uh, that didn't work. But uh, Buxis, he uh, okay, scored all the their points when the French under-21s run the World Rugby World Cup against South Africa. They won 24-13, and this man scored all the points. Hits the ball fantastically well, and this time he's got it straight as well. So France go in with the boost of points on the board. The last kick before half time goes over, and it's uh, New Zealand 13, France 3. Difficult half for France, in that nothing they were really trying to do worked very well. But you've got to say they're still in it at 13-3. Oh, no question. They are still in it. I feel they have to score first if they concede a converted try early in the second half. I, I think the game may well be up for them. But certainly better towards the end of the first half. They did ask some questions defensively of New Zealand. I think you've just got to keep New Zealand thinking, both in attack and uh, it took a long time for France to do that. But that prolonged attack uh, just before half-time, they did on a couple of occasions actually create situations. We both looked at each other and went, oh, because they took wrong options. 
And you wonder whether they are perhaps thinking uh, a bit too defensively instead of their normal inspirational attack. Absolutely right, and, and I, I just I just think they've got to back their own instincts. And if they think it's on, let them believe it's on, and react accordingly. At the moment, moment certainly in their own half, they are playing programmed rugby. They are just kicking the ball up. You know, Clerk always has a couple of goes. He's not a great tactical kicker. Carter has kicked three or four to him. Hasn't troubled New Zealand at all. They're making Leon McDonald look rather good at fullback, and indeed Rokotoko, and indeed Sibabatu. So I think they've got to change that aspect of their game. And New Zealand with 60% of possession to 40%, but interestingly, territorially, it was 50-50. Well, you wonder from New Zealand's point of view, you know, did they take their foot off the gas with 10 minutes to go of that half? Were they just playing control rugby? We'll settle for conceding three, and we're going to blast it in the first 15 second half. That may be a, a, a tactical ploy they're playing. That one little moment of madness just before half-time, where deep in his own 22, Carter shaped up to clear, and then obviously got a call of some sort. And thank goodness his kick was actually long enough. If that dropped any short, France could have well have been in, and I think he'd have been on the uh, the end of Graham Henry's tongue. Yeah, for for the mercurial man that uh, he's portrayed to be, he's. I think we can say widely recognised as the leading fly half in the world. To make a decision like that in the 39th minute, when you're winning comfortably 13-0, why put your team under pressure? Because you know if you get it down there in their half, France ain't running it back at you. And they can't kick a penalty from there either. No, very, very strange one. Just a moment of madness, but it's good to know they're human as well. And uh, looking at the... Uh, the the, the French first half, though, Amy, we, we, we know they were going to play this kicking game. And uh, here we're going to see sort of some highlights of that first half. But generally, they have a bench that could change things a bit. Uh, Patrono, as I say, is a running pullback. And if you're going to actually say the kicking game's not working, there's no real point in keeping Demi on try there, is there? You might as well have a, an elusive runner like Quattrono coming back. And add to that, our friend Michelat can be mercurial if it's his day. There's no question about that. He can certainly cause defences all manner of problems. I just don't think they've been able to put the six, seven, eight phases together like New Zealand did. And nobody's made a break like McAllister's done two or three times. Much as you rightly say that Jojo and Amati are eminently capable of doing it, they just haven't looked like doing it so far, have they? No, they really haven't, Dad. Uh, Josian, who's normally always looking for a chance to uh, make a break, actually didn't look to me as if he was ready. It, it, it was as if, uh, hang on, I'm under orders. I've got to move this, I've got to put play to points and positions. I'm not allowed to pick it up and just go for my natural game. No, that's right, and, and it's almost as if they're shackled, really. This is some all-black attacking play in the in the first half. And really, McAllister was the difference. He made two or three clear breaks. This may well be one of them. This is the chip over the top, which he regathers. And uh, that's from count as a break in my book as an ex-centre. But he made a couple of clean ones as well, and he's been the major difference. He certainly was the instigator of the, the all-black try, no doubt about that at all. And bear in mind also, you should, uh, France have missed three. Well, they missed a drop goal and two. Certainly, one was very pickable, wasn't it? So they, you know, they uh, that was Ali Williams falsely claiming he was anywhere near scoring a try, which we proved pretty quickly. And this is the break, you know. And, and look at his eyes. He knows Collins is there. He then goes in support, gets it back. Thank you very much indeed. Carter does the rest to add the. Supplementary two points, and uh, they've looked good in the line out. New Zealand, it's, it's a perceived weakness of theirs. The line out, they've looked good tonight, that's for sure. Oliver's hit the button all the time. Keller, scrum half as combative as ever. Rocker Coco, pretty physical. Sadly, to Serge Betson's demise this evening, although it was a subsequent knee that really took its toll on him. Carter slots another, cool as you like. 
and New Zealand seem pretty in control. Now, this is the one that should have gone over. And there'd have been a terrific difference between 13-3 and 13-6. Indeed, one converted try. One converted try. Speaking of tries, another kick from one's own half. He looks at the man, doesn't look at the ball. I noticed towards the end of that half, you saw it just there. New Zealand are very canny at just leaving guys in the way. They don't take a different path and uh, deliberately take anybody out, but they do make sure that they're in a straight line between the runner and the receiver. Well, and I think New Zealand have quite rightly picked as we watch the, the one kick that does finally go over and he slips, he slips over at the same time. They know it's going to happen every time the French are in their half, so they can position themselves accordingly and make sure that the ball, the, 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 their man catching the ball is not going to be impeded in any shape or form. And if you can't contest the ball, it's jolly hard to get it back. Yeah, and there is no uh, mention in the laws about you having to actually get out of the way of a runner. As long as you don't actually deliberately try and obstruct him, you're perfectly entitled to stay where you are. And if you're there 10, 15 metres before he gets there, then uh, you can stay there. Happy New Zealand supporters. Nothing really so far to trouble them at all. They've looked in control. Haven't been uh, totally at their best, but Luke McAllister, as we were saying earlier, has been the real difference. First capped against the Lions in 2005. He started, really, as an understudy to Carter, but he's now developed as a, as a top-class centre in his own right was the IRB Young Player of the Year in 2002 and had uh, trials when he was a kid for Manchester United. His, his, his uh, father played rugby league for Oldham and that's why he's going back to Manchester to uh, join Sale. Says he knows Manchester, likes Manchester and he's looking forward to a spell back there. And New Zealand are furious, they're losing a 24-year-old. He's also played a lot of rugby at fly half. I remember, I think, against the Lions a couple of years ago, he played a, a test match. I think the last one, Carter pulled out, and he, and he played in the third test and in Auckland. The series was, I have to say, comfortably won by that stage, but he looked pretty composed in the number 10 shirt as well. Yeah, as I was saying, he, he was originally thought of as the understudy to Carter, but um, he decided, I think, quite rightly, that that place might be locked up for a while, and he's a very talented centre. I've just spotted something, John. Interestingly, Fabian Palouse led the French team out. What that says about Ibanez, the captain, I don't know. Maybe Palouse was just first out of the tunnel, but certainly Palouse was was leading the troops out. So it'll be interesting to see if Ibanez is, is still on the park or uh, Sarzewski's come on. I Maybe cannot see Ibanez at the moment. Yeah, we've had a problem. Yeah, I think uh, you're right. I think Swarovski is on. Chris. Swarovski, the, the youngster, 24 years old, the Stade Francais hooker, and he adds a real load of uh, dynamism to this whole thing. Because it was Ibanez who was injured right at the end of the first half, wasn't it? So perhaps that's the, the reason. Whether it's temporary or not remains to be seen. Well, Sarzewski normally and comes on after about an hour, and uh, maybe they've decided that uh, they've got to do it. Carter with the dropout. Again, it's allowed to bounce, but New Zealand get away with it. And away, 12! 
It's right on his head. Oh. We're just going to stop. It's not. It's stuck on his head. And there's uh, no way that's coming back. It's right on his head, says uh, Wayne Barnes. No, oh, hang on. Is uh, Eben Yes is there still? Yes. Yep, no, Ibanez is definitely there. Wait for your twos. Crouch. Touch. Balls. Engage. Well, he didn't lead the team out. I think it's, it must be Pooks who's come side. on, the preserve prop that's come on then. Oh, and Kelleher. They can't quite find their men, and it peters out as it goes into touch. It is absolutely Jean Baptiste Pooks has come on. Right and uh, he's stuff? come on instead of Olivier Milou. Right so well, 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 Kelleher's front. gone down, I think, with a calf injury, following that superb break that he made from that scrum. And uh, he went down clutching his calf, and he, there he is there. And uh, it really is uh, nine, a great nine. break by Kelleher. Limps okay. away. That was danger signs all round for France. Zealand come up with the ball. Terrific power there from Jerry That's Collins. Right. That's what he does so well. Clears it out. McAllister, good tackling by the French on that occasion, but protected well in the end by New Zealand. They're still in charge. McDonald up there, but Kelleher's there now, so he defers. Soyalu. Richie McCaw, Tony Woodcock, back inside, Carter, that's uh, Anton Oliver. And away, Captain, thank you, no hands! Just watch your foot, back you go, back you go, 40. Stand up, four and five. Sidivato goes in there to, to clear the ball. Four back, come back. All used to acting as a... Uh, Acting scrum half, little chip through. Try. No problem, says the referee. But uh, well done, try. He got the kick away deep into the New Zealand half. Oh, and Sivivatu almost away. Just the shirt tag stopped him. Set up by McCaw. Keller to Carter, back inside to Sivivatu. Kelleher again, now a little bit of an overlap, not much space, but uh, Soyalu. Driven on again by Woodcock. Kelleher again. Carter to Collins, the little loop round, but well read, I think, by Dusatois. He's so quick when he takes off the uh, gangly frame of Ali Williams. He was a soccer goalie until he was 18. That's OK, and a chance here for France. Now, should he have picked it up? And then only three Frenchmen up there, they're isolated. It's bound to be stolen by the All Blacks. And uh, they get back to recover. And Muliaina. Okay. Okay. Not in touch though. This is uh, Ali Nordiki. Damien Troy, they've got men over out here. They, oh, and the passing just wasn't good enough. The chance is gone. Line out France. Another great opportunity squandered by them. Two fantastic opportunities. Unbelievable opportunities for France to get right back in this game. First down the left-hand side, I felt they should have carried on toe-poking it on towards the try line New Zealand would never have got back. And then an appalling pass by Try ruined a massive overlap on this right-hand side. It's still French throw, but can they retain this impetus? Can they get something on the board? Thion with the catch. In goes the drive. Ibanez at the heart of it. 
making inroads. Going boss field as well. They won't mind that because it opens up another chance to attack. Up to five metres from the New Zealand line. On goes the drive again. Penalty, France. Now they're playing advantage. They get it wide. Little chip through. And another penalty given, deliberately taken out. Now what's he going to give? It must be a yellow card, I fancy. I think he might have even thought for a moment about a penalty try. And McAllister, I think, is the man in trouble. Don't get involved, let me, let Yes, me I think you're okay. absolutely right. Okay. Right, you France had the penalty in the bag anyway. Little chip kick here. There's McAllister towards the right. He certainly blocks his way, that's for sure. Certainly blocks his way. And I think Barnes, having, having stopped him there, has got to go yellow. Yes. We've got cynical play over there by delivering the clap. We've got a cynical piece of play here by man taking out the man. He goes to the bin for ten minutes. Yep, a yellow card. Two pieces of very cynical defensive play. And cynical the word used by the referee as well. And uh, so... New Zealand down to 14 men for 10 minutes. France on the attack. Now they'll take these points and then it's essential that they really go for the jugular. Absolutely. We've been asking France to ask questions of New Zealand's defence and they found some answers, i.e. there's some chinks in the defence of New Zealand and the pressure is paying off. Now, okay. tactically, John, what do they do? Okay. One man down in, in the backs, they can't afford to kick possession away now. They've got to make the best use possible of the next ten minutes. Absolutely. I mean, that's a really good point. If they were on a kicking game, now they've got to use the extra man. 13-6. Now France, just one converted try behind. Well, on such things... The World Cup's change. They really do. McAllister had no need to do that. He should have backed his defence to secure that ball. But he's got to watch for 10 minutes and see if his teammates can hold on to this lead. They'll slow it down, New Zealand, that's for sure. They will certainly not be in any rush to do anything. Good refereeing from Wayne Barnes. He's uh, given them the warning that he's not going to have... Just cynical killing of the ball. Off blue, play on! That was OK, because it Love came off it. a French player. Oh, and Mulyaina. Lovely support from McDonald. Collins, Sivivatu, who'll just run at them hard. Kelleher. And suddenly New Zealand keeping the ball in hand, building up the phases. Sivivatu goes in to secure the ball. Keller has there. Just one man wide out right, and that's Rocker Foco. And, uh, they try to drive it up. way ahead of the uh, the forwards there good defence from France no gain for New Zealand but they're lining up for another go taking their time getting themselves into possession now it will be Rodney Soyalu and uh, the French cannot get their hands on the ball Kelleher going back in to set it up the French need to get over the top Everything going backwards, but a French boot got in there. This is uh, Muliaina. And away, Blue. No hands. Nine, nine on the floor, nine. It's taking up some time too, John, isn't it? McCaw. Showing he can do the hard driving yards as well as the linking roll. Collins. Just taking the sting out of the... The French elation. And France sensing they could yes, get a hand on it. They can't. No, don't touch him. Not like him. He might be the scrum half. 
Well, we know New Zealand will stay patient. Will France, will they keep their discipline and not give away a penalty? Vital that they don't give those three points back. McCaw again, does so well, and France just haven't got the men to get over the top of the ball and get a hand on it. As the man is brought down, and New Zealand suddenly making significant yards. They're only a couple of metres short. Hands away, captain! Nine, nine, thank you! Oh, and knocked on by Sayalu. Well, a wild pass brings that period of pressure to an end. And the French breathe a sigh of relief. You've got to tell you, cap off, top your cap to New Zealand, wasn't it? It was fantastic forward play. They all knew what their responsibility was. They've certainly used up at least three minutes, I would suggest, four minutes of McAllister's time in the sin bin. It's Chris Jack, I think it is, coming onto the field. Yeah, off goes... Uh... Keith Robinson, the man they brought in to add a bit of grit and grunt uh, to the New Zealand scrum. Uh, on comes Chris Jack, the most experienced player of all in the New Zealand squad, coming on for his uh, 67th cap. Massive scrum for France, isn't it? They've got to clear their lines and then go again. Big high fives going on all around the French pack, especially... Uh, from Thierry uh, Dussetois for that defensive effort and fair play to them, they did keep their discipline, they didn't give away a penalty and they eventually forced the mistake. Free kick, early engagement from the New Zealanders and uh, that uh, negates the need for a good scrum. Uh, certainly in touch. Well, that's unbelievable. Now, I do not understand what Tony Spreadbury was doing there. That ball very definitely went into touch. And McDonald gave it up for being in touch, didn't he? And, and that's, that certainly cost him a good 15 yards, I would suggest, the, uh, the French. But they have the throw. Nordicke, but there was a little knock-on spotted by the referee and the advantage is gone. France can't afford this, they really cannot afford this. They've got to get some possession, they've got to get it out to the backs. New Zealand are one short in the back line. McDonald is playing on the right wing. Toulouse is going off. On comes the talisman, Cheval. Now uh, Sazewski comes on as well. And the skipper goes off. The two old men, the uh, the two leaders of this French team, going off to make way for new legs. And Chabal goes into the second row. He won't be kicking. No, he certainly won't be. He'll want as much ball as possible in his hands. Good tackle on Tayalu. Rocked him back. Dusatwa. On Chris Jack, Kelleher, the core, Saltier, Jack again, Rockathoko, Saltier, McCore again, so good at this, trusting themselves, good strength on the ball. Oh, and a drop goal from Carter, Wade. Big boos going up. The crowd wanting to see New Zealand playing some rugby, but uh, you can't blame them. They want to just stay down that end. And a few more seconds, stick off the, the Callister clock, and here go France. That was Marty finishing it off. Good work. And France suddenly. That's uh, Josion, they got men out there. Out a little clap. In goes. Push again, and now France coming at them. Clerk in the midfield. 
Oh, lovely pass, is it? Try, try get it to Aaron Orniki. Aaron Orniki gets past one, he's a metre short. And a real chance for France here. Clerk gets past one, now they want quick ball. Essential that they get quick ball. Everything going for them on the left. Now the pass wasn't good enough, all the advantage really lost. But they start again, they've still got control of the ball. This is Slareski. The hooker sets it up. Good ball this time. Elisal, Josie on, this is Claire. And in goes Doucetois! And Doucetois! Almost takes the roof off the stadium, but the cheers go up. France have breached New Zealand's defence. Well, suddenly there seems to be a few more Frenchmen in this stadium. The pressure paid off. This was good timing of the pass. Doucetois, straight through the tackle. Had the sense to try and get under the sticks as well. He knows how valuable the extra two are. But they pushed it wide, John, didn't they? They asked questions and eventually numbers pays off. And Doucetois at pace. Great line. Gets the score. What a game we have here in Cardiff. And Thierry Doucetois, he's been a real revelation this season. The most experienced man in the French side. It's only his eighth cap today. 25-year-old, originally from the Ivory Coast, has gone in for that all-important try. Remember, New Zealand still down to 14 men. And France have used the advantage of the extra man magnificently. Oh, and that's off the post, but it doesn't matter. It's over, and the scores are level. It's 13 all. Well, is France's good fortune changing? That could have easily hit the upright and come straight back towards Boxy. But it went in off the post. It's all on. Momentum with France. And uh, replacements coming on for New Zealand. Back on is McAllister too. So New Zealand back to full strength. Uh, the referee just has a word with him and says, I'm not putting up with any more of that. And Carter's off. Carter's off with his calf, I think. He's limping off. He is indeed. Nick Evans will take over from him. Evans very, very capable too. But suddenly this game has changed complexion. Cheval has got the ball in his feet, a little Elisalde. Back to Boxis. Not the best kick, that's uh, Rodney Sayalu. He wasn't going to kick it, was he? And that's a Kelleher's gone off as well. And uh, Brendan Leonard now on at Scrum Half. McDonald. Trying to find a little way through, knock on, mistake in the communication there. Nick Evans, I think it was, or McAllister, perhaps uh, not expecting the ball. And Richie McCaw suddenly, Jamie cla uh, clapping his hands and saying, come on, let's get a grip of this again. Absolutely, and he's relying on not his normal lot to do it. With Carter off, Kelleher off, that axis is gone now. And who would have thought it would be Leonard and Nick Evans to see New Zealand home into the semi-finals? I tell you what, there's a few Englishmen watching this with interest now, aren't there? There really are. Well, that's gone round through 90 degrees, and uh, that means a, another scrum, and the put-in goes to New Zealand. And look at the uh, anxious faces on the New Zealand bench. It's all been calm waters and easy sailing for them up to this point in the competition. But now you can see the tension. 
Well, they've not been asked these questions before, have they? Not at all. Well, in fairness, the, some people in the New Zealand camp were even saying we don't like the fact that the team hasn't really had a very hard match. It hasn't been tested out. And uh, all these uh, cruising to victory. Remember, the, uh, the toughest game they've had was 40 points to nil against Scotland before this one in this World Cup. And we were there and they were coasting, weren't they? And it's very, very different to this one. There goes Leonard. And France getting there in numbers, no but uh, well protected by New Zealand. Trying to drive it back there to Andrew Hoare. No problem. On for Anton Oliver. Just uh, Nick Evans showing what he can do. Jerry Collins. Richie McCaw, the captain, just trying to get a platform for New Zealand to attack from. Again, a little Saltier! dummy and go from Leonard. Soyalu. Lash! And New Zealand content at the moment to just drive it up. Attacking that ruck. Soyalu again in position with McCaw, his captain. They'll tick and go again, I think. There they are. So Soyalu tries to drive it up. France not giving anything at the moment. Collins. The pick and give this time uh, to Woodcock. Leonard, Muliaina saying, get some people wider, let's let's attack this one from a bit wider. There's Muliaina, back to Leonard, McCaw sets it up. Leonard again, McAllister. Lash! Back in with one of those powerful runs, Leonard, Muliaina, tries to burrow her way through. Lash! And uh, Chabal gets his hands on it. And it's a mighty wrestling match, and Chabal has got it. Well, Chabal's made his presence foul there. I thought France should have got a penalty, because I thought an all-black forward came in and dived on the ball. There's Chabal wrestling for it there. That's Leonard, the scrum half. And wild, wild play, Chabal. It's a long period of play for New Zealand. Can they get the scrum right? The last scrum was a poor one, it went round, remember. They lost the put-in, they've got to get this one right and play bottom third rugby. And it's a penalty, That's a, that'll do. And a quick cry of no, uh, or no, from the, the French boys as uh, Elisalda made as if to take a quick one. But surely this is the time to make 40 or 50 metres up to the New Zealand 10 metre line and take a line out from there. Your scrimmage is fantastic, I've got no problem with your scrimmage. Yes, absolutely. France taking their time now, they know they're back in this game, they're walking to this line out, they're controlled, they're getting organised. Sarzewski, the hooker. Newly on for his captain, big responsibility now, he must find his man. And he doesn't. Williams comes up with it just in front of Thion. Evans to McAllister. And McCaw, as ever, there in support, spins off and nice. sets it up. Collins. Oh, and Sibidatu almost gets away. Collins, good tackle on him, but rumbling forward, the All Blacks looking dangerous. Leonard, they've got men over out here on the left, Soyalu. Nice step inside from the number eight, he's not just a power runner. 
For a moment, France sniffed the ball, but uh, in goes McCaw, sets it up again for the All Blacks. Leonard waiting. Owen drives himself, and they're back way deep into the French 22. Ali Williams. Yes! Owen, terrific work, driving work from Andrew Hoare. Chris Jack, they're only a metre short. Soyalu. Oh, and did he get that? He might have done. Tony Spreadbury, the touch judge has seen it. He's calling the referee over, and I think he is saying that's a try. Well, I would certainly agree with you, John. I thought he made the wrong option. He had men outside him, but I think he just burrows over. Tony... Tony Spreadbury has said he thinks it's a try. The referee's gone upstairs in any case, but I think we'll see conclusively. There's no doubt. Rodney Soyalu has driven over for New Zealand. Yes, he certainly has, and New Zealand have responded magnificently since the French drew level. You can see this is a clear-cut try. There's the ball on the line. There's no problem with that whatsoever, I don't believe. Now, remember, the line is a score. It's funny the way this game has ebbed and flowed because France haven't been in it since they went to 13 all. Just when you thought they had all the momentum. I don't know why the TMO is taking so long on this one myself. I don't think that's a double movement or anything like that. So I'm surprised it hasn't been given already, John, to be honest. Uh, it's Chris White, the Englishman, who is uh, the uh, television referee. I cannot see any problem there at all, and yes, I've got absolutely you, no doubt he's going to give it. And I can award that now, is that correct? Thank you very much. Well, that all took a bit longer than it needed to have done. Well, I, there's, there's cheers ringing around the stadium. I think there's a bit of relief in there, too, from the New Zealand supporters. This is going to be no steamroller job. New goal kicker now with Carter off. There's Helen Clark, the uh, New Zealand Prime Minister, watching anxiously. And the man entrusted with the kicking duties is Luke McAllister. And that's wide of the right post. Well, France still very much in it. How much do they believe? Oh, that's interesting. Is that Jerry Collins off, John? He was, I thought he was having a storming game. Well, he certainly was. Uh, now, whether that's an injury or a tactical sub, I'm not sure, but it'll be uh, Chris Masuri who's come on for him. France need to get themselves back. 18-13 behind. Well, again, Boke sees with that sort of shuffling run. Williams it was who gathered it in and uh, puts it up now, Nick Evans. Oh, that's a dreadful fumble. The chances almost all went out the window there as Cedric Heymans made a dreadful mistake. The man who played fullback against Argentina almost ruined the French challenge. Well, they're still going to be under huge pressure. New Zealand scrum to come. How will they play it tactically? Are they going to chance their arm and get it wide? Bad mistake by Heymans. Totally no pressure around, no pressure around him at all. Speculation catch. And Rocafoco was so close to getting the first boot to that. Just quickly, I think Wayne Barnes has done a great job tonight, actually. First massive game for him. He's not played, sorry, not refereed many test matches. And a big appointment, some sort of a big risk, but I think he's done a really good job.
Leonard with the feed. 15 minutes to go. What a test match we have here. Evans! Oh, and just caught. And the knock on as he tried to offload, but little Elisal did so well to get him. He was holding on, wasn't he? Little show and go from Evans as Ellis say, just look at that, he's just fingertip stuff and then manages to get the dive in to get one leg. Evans tries to get it to Willie Aina, I think it was, on his left hand side, but it's a knock on French ball. Given. Evans does offer them so much in attack, Tins. he's a very, very talented flyer in place. his own right. Crouch, touch, force, engage, middle. Well, again, no, the All Blacks managed to ruin the possession. And there's the counter rap from New Zealand. Somehow, I think France have still managed to Let protect it. 16, 16, go back. Marty acting as the fly half, and uh, Vauxhies gets the kick in. Now, this is dangerous. They run it back. Oh, and it's a great tackle. And that was forward. I think that was uh, Zazdewski, wasn't it? The, uh, the hooker who made the tackle. Great chasing by the French. Interestingly, though, John, as Michelak looks to come on, the French scrum has struggled since Ibanez and Palouse went off. Is Chabal putting his everything into the scrummaging? Because it's been in real trouble since those two went off. And Michelak comes on for Vauxhies. Now, we know what uh, Michelak can do. On his day, he can be okay. an absolute wizard. Let's go, Let's go. But he can also make a horrible mess of things. Two's in. Yes, it's either the charge down or the intercept or a glorious individual run, isn't it? But I'm worried about this French club. That looks better. Not ideal, but better. Oh, and in comes Damien Try using his pace. Well, it might have been a touch forward, but he got away with it. Michelin, they pass inside, and Josiel, over. Well, immediately, the pace and the penetration of Michelin counts. Daniel Troy using his strength, and France are back level with the conversion to come. Well, Michelak has made an instant impression, if ever there was one. He managed to have the foresight to turn inside as well. Found Jojon, and he was never going to be stopped. Now, was this forward? Yes, it was, by a mile. No question about that. Rooker Thoko even was appealing for it. He should have been concentrating on saving the day. What a try. What a terrific piece of work, though, by Michelak on the end. Uh, spurning the outside pass, which would have been a 50-50 one at best. He obviously got a call, but it was great. And France are in the lead, unbelievably. Elisalda adds the conversion. And France lead New Zealand for the first time in this quarter-final. 20 points to 18. Well, the scrum work, the support play works. And the right decisions were made, especially by Michelac. New Zealand will be aggrieved about the forward pass. That happens. It evens itself out. New Zealand in real trouble here. Ten to go. Zazewski. And Damien Trey with a huge kick. Doesn't find touch, and now they've got to run it all the way back. Sivibatu. Tackled in his own half. And is a more. And it's come down, I think, on the French side. Oh, and they got the put in. Not quite a turnover, but almost as good as. Absolutely right, John. As good as. Sibi Barsu has no kicking game. France knew that he was going to run. He's not a kicker in any way or form. Ten minutes to go, and can France do it again? Remember how they upset New Zealand in the second half. And there is a problem. That is 
Nick Evans going off. So Toyava's come on, but if Nick Evans is also injured, they haven't got a fly half. And suddenly, the pendulum has very definitely swung France's way. Aeronautically driving off. And they've got a turnover. New Zealand have got the ball back. McAllister. Or when Toyaba. Oh, but he lost the ball in contact. Huge kick. Oh, couldn't have been better. Wonderful. That was uh, Vincent Clerc with a rocket in his boot. Well, he showed some vision. One of the better kicks, I have to say, France have done tonight. And he got the bounce as well. Nothing at all that New Zealand can do about that. I think McAllister will step into 10 with Evans going off. As you say, with an injury, that leaves them very bad. But McAllister has played there before, but has he got it to get New Zealand out of this hole? Ball with the throw. Williams came up with it. Now New Zealand have really got to dig deep. Leonard. Well, was that legal? Christophe Dominici, the little winger on. Referee says he's happy, but... Uh... Well, didn't look much of a tackle to me, John, I have to say. No, it was more just a swinging arm, wasn't it? And that's an offence. And he was a foot away from the touch judge and about five Two. yards away from the referee, to be frank. Hello, see Ibanez, the elder citizens. Well, that wasn't very straight. Uh, France piled through. Well recovered by McCaw. Lovely little chip through, but red. No. And uh, again, the kick into open space, nicely done by Take Vincent Clair. 22 dropout. Well, the one thing France are doing, John, is they're playing it down this end, aren't they? Absolutely. New Zealand, if they're going to score, they're going to have to score from 70. Se what's it now? 73 on the clock. Absolutely. Seven minutes left. And uh, they're making sure they play it down okay. here. Okay, your ball, please. McAllister. Okay, McAllister okay, okay, will okay. be the man now, of course, that fly half. He's got experience there, as we were saying earlier, played against the Lions in the third test. Imanol Arinodiki takes the responsibility. Hands away, blue! But they've stolen the ball. Turnover, and back come New Zealand. No room through there for Muliaina. Now, don't pull knife. Was that a little not forward? No, says the referee. Leon McDonald. Well, New Zealand giving it everything as you'd expect, but this Lash! is not where they expected to be at this stage of the game. Richie McCaw. That was good. Hands away! Sets it back again. Leonard's there. Right oh, and Soyalu nearly put a hand in there. McAllister goes again. He's a bit isolated. Flash. Does very well. Sets the ball back. That's Muliaina. Rokathoka. Poor. This is uh, Toyaba. Nash! Leonard McAllister. Well, you can't fault his effort this evening. Back feet. Leonard again. That's uh, McDonald. They're getting into attacking territory. Patience by the All Blacks. It's a terrific effort from them, but they can't afford a mistake. Sivivatu makes Nash! another five metres. Leonard, McAllister. Nash! Center, ball is out, one problem. One feet up. Four drives it up, the, hook, the replacement hooker. Nash knocked it up! 
And the French showing good discipline in defence. Back it comes to McAllister again. McCaw. Gets away from one tackler. Sets it up there into the 22. Driving on now, Masoui. Oh, great effort, and uh, Sivivatu takes it out there, 10 metres short. Good discipline from the French, it's another matter to get over. Woodcock with the drive. Well, you sense that if the All Blacks don't come away with something from here, the game is up. But they're applying enormous pressure, we're into the last five minutes. Sibivatu. And they just see a chance maybe down the short side. France have got to stay cool. New Zealand have two. On goes the drive. They're up to five metres. Drive upon drive. Back it comes, and have they turned it over? No, no, no. One steal. One steal. It was a one-man steal, he was on his feet, and France have it, now they have to clear it. Bows it up, and oh, Jack cannot gather it. They've got to take him down. Can he get the ball away? France pile in. Oh, and France need to get across, there's a big hole close to the ruck, if they attack that, there could be trouble. Miliaina tries to do exactly that. Soyalu, wondering whether there was a chance perhaps for the drop. Oh, and coming back inside, Woodcock. And France again, half cents a turnover, they don't get it. Soyalu. Last! Bataillon, no! Bataillon! And the French coming through from the back. And they've got it. A great effort by France. They counter up so hard. Two minutes left on the clock. Can they clear their lines now? is a truly heroic defensive effort from the French. Elisalda puts it into touch. Brief respite, we're into the last two minutes. Wow, what a stag staggering passage of play. What magnificent defence by the French. New Zealand were going for a repeat of the Solialu try. The New Zealand management shake their heads. They know their jobs are on the line. New Zealand lose this, they go. It's as simple as that in New Zealand. That is no doubt about that. Yeah, John Mitchell's record, the last coach, was absolutely terrific. He only lost about three or four matches in charge, but one of those was the World Cup semi-final. And he immediately went. I don't think they could believe it if they were to fail here. No, indeed not. The clock has stopped. There's a minute and a half and a bit more left, that's it. Can they hold on? It is a New Zealand throw. Their throw has worked all night. Their line-outs worked all night. Dan Carter looks on. What thoughts going through his mind? Well, a terrific passage of disciplined attack from New Zealand and disciplined defence from the French. The trouble is if they, if they go for something like a drop goal and it doesn't hit the target, that's really a gone. So they're going to try and work it. France comes wide to Sibibatu. Or oh, he gets past two. McCaw working his socks off to get in there. Leonard. McAllister. A knock on. A knock on from the French. They've still got the ball, we're into the last minute. Back it goes, and the drop goal attempt. It's going to be short, and wide. And that is it.
Danny Ochoa will not touch it down until he has to. And who can blame him? And he runs it out. It is now 30 seconds. They have a 22 drop out. What was McAllister doing? Why have a drop goal near the halfway line when you spent minutes inside their 22? What's he doing? Well, it would have been glorious if it had gone, but uh, it just shows the tension. Unbelievable. Incredible scenes here. Nobody this morning would have given you a, a chance. And the kick gives New Zealand possession. The call. Thank you, Chris. This is now the last attack. Thank you, Chris. I've heard the referee say he knows Thank the you. next stoppage is time. McDonald brought down. Thank you. Now stops it off. And uh, Leonard. They've got to move it now. Well done by Muliaina. They can't afford a mistake. Rokathoko gets it away. Do France have it? For a moment it seemed as if France had it. The All Blacks got it back. McAllister through the middle again. Backwards. Lays it back. That was a penalty probably, I think, against uh, Aaron Ordeke. Not given. Oh, and they've lost it forward. And this is going to be it. Elisalda is just going to run the ball off the bench. Into the stand and France. Still in the World Cup. New Zealand look absolutely staggered. They cannot believe it. The run goes on. They have not won the World Cup since 1987. At the end of the first half, they looked odds on here, but France have done for them again. Incredibly. France have run out. Victors by 20 points to 18. Well, extraordinary scenes here in Cardiff. Dejected faces one side. Unbelievably happy faces the tether. Quite extraordinary. France 13-3 down at half-time. Unbelievable. And when you think, what was it, John? Three weeks ago they played Argentina. And then two weeks ago, one week ago, they're all saying... Where's Northern Hemisphere rugby gone? And what's happened today? Well, incredible. You'd have got probably 100 to 1 this morning on an England-France semi-final. France's World Cup is still alive. It would have been horrendous to have been in France next week if they had been out. They have risen to the challenge in absolutely magnificent form and have turned this one around on sheer absolute willpower. I tell you what, I'd love to see how many tackles France had to make in that second half. It was many, many, many. There's him and there's the captain. He's suddenly pretty fit now, isn't he? He's got a few, few miles left in those legs. Look at the joyous scenes. I'm very pleased for Betson, who was carried off after only a couple of minutes. The poor old New Zealand. Four more years, I'm afraid. Four more years. And then it will be down on their own turf, of course. But that is quite incredible. And New Zealand have yet again failed. This time, not even at the penultimate hurdle. Richie McCaw. Well, Richie McCaw, you can sell the pits. That must be a terrible blow for you. What's your immediate reaction? Oh, mate, I'm not sure. Uh... It was a hell of a test match. Um, yeah, I lost words really. Uh, the French, you know, as we always knew they could in the second half, uh, up the tempo a wee bit. We we sort of perhaps lost a wee bit of composure. Thought we got it back there, but um, yes, can't afford to do that in a quarter final. They just seem to have that ability to come back at you, don't they? It's, I mean, it's not the first time they've done it in such a big match. <laughs> no, tell me about it. Um, yeah, I can't explain it, mate. Uh, you know, we we believed we had, had the goods at half time. We talked about wanting to keep the tempo up and play our game. Perhaps got lulled into playing a bit of ping pong in the first half. Um, yeah, mate, oh, just one of those days that uh, you want to forget. I know it's very difficult for you, but I mean, how big a blow is this for New Zealand rugby? I mean, you've been such overwhelming favourites for this tournament for so long. 
Yeah, I guess we have. Um, but you know, we knew that. Um, we, we tried to prepare as such. You know, we've uh, been in big matches before, and you know, the guys play a lot of rugby. But um, you know, big matches is where you got to uh, play. Everyone's got to stand up. And perhaps as a team today, we 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 were a second best team. Richie, thanks for coming to talk to us. Cheers, Richie. If ever there was a man who looked entirely shattered, that was it, and well he might. Absolutely stunned Richie McCaw, he cannot believe it. Their passage had been so assured, and then the first time the pressure really came on. And the amazing thing is, we now know that we actually have a Northern Hemisphere team in the final. Absolutely right, John. England will do battle against the host nation, France, back in the host nation. As you said, New Zealand had the dream passage. They even took the hosts out of their own country and got them here in Cardiff. Graham Henry said there is a no-excuse policy. He had whatever he wanted to do with them. all year. He pulled them out of everything. Well done, France. Hats off to them. Attitude was fantastic. Well, they did have that little bit of luck. Rafael Ibanez, how satisfying is that? What? Well, you know, it's a win. I think it's a good win. We um, we make them play on the wrong way. I think we we were really brave, really brave. And we, you know, when when the team spirit is there for the French, you know, it's um, difficult to stop us. 13-3 down at the interval. Did you think the match was getting away from you? Well, you know, with the with the search score, you know, especially half time and uh, the way the All Blacks play in the first half. Um, it was, we needed some big, big effort to come back into the game and uh, this is what we did. And you seem as a nation to have this ability to turn, turn the matches around against New Zealand. Go. Yeah, well, you know, the All Blacks, great team. They, are, they were the favourites on, on this tournament. Um, we, uh, we, were, we had some tough moments during the game, but uh, I think the whole, you know, the way, the way we play with some some so commitment um, and bravery. I think this is what made the difference today. And a quick word, a Northern Hemisphere semi-final next weekend? Yeah, it won't be the three nations like uh, everyone was expecting. Um, we, were, we were not really happy during the week before the game, um, hearing that uh, it would be just a contest between uh, teams from the Southern Hemisphere, and you see England and you see France in the semi-final, so I think great, it's great news for the Northern Hemisphere. And tonight. Thank you. Well, an incredibly happy uh, Rafael Ibanez, and well he might be. That is the shock of all shocks. Lots of people referring back to that semi-final in 99. I don't think anybody really thought it was going to happen. No, nobody did. Nobody believed it would, apart from these guys out on the pitch. Perhaps... Bernard Laporte is the genius, John. He's had, as you were saying earlier in the commentary, he's had his people who have mocked him and the manner in which he's gone about things. But I, did, I questioned his tactics first half as well. But what a comeback by France. But that, I think their defence won it today. That tackling was unbelievable. It was indeed, and uh, all credit to them because they knew they were fighting for their lives. They knew that the whole of French pride was just on the line to such an extent. It was their World Cup. It would have been a very, very damp squib indeed for the next two weeks if they had not been involved. And they pulled it out. Bernard Laporte, I don't think he can believe it either. A fantastic performance. What a Saturday in the history of rugby this is. Never have we seen two upsets of this dimension. I know these are all seeded teams and uh, you put them up there and you say, well, anything could happen. But the form book going into it told us very, very clearly that these should have been victory for Australia and victory for France, instead of which we've got the opposite. Well, look at the tackles you were talking about. 178 tackles against 36. I mean, that is an amazing, amazing statistic. New Zealand, possession, 72% to 28%. Territory, 62% to 38% in the end. And yet France just withstood everything that was thrown at them and came out on top.
little Frederic Michelac who came on and provided the inspiration for that winning try. They had that little bit of luck. The pass to him was forward in my book, but it happened in a split second. And as you were saying, Jamie, they tend to even out, but that was a pretty crucial one to get away with. It certainly was, but the pace of the move, and this may sound very odd, took them away from the touch judge and the referee. They were 10, 12 yards behind. They couldn't keep up with it. Such was the, the pace of the, of the move. As we look at some of the highlights from the second half, this was Callagher. He went down after that lovely little break with a calf injury, soon to be replaced by Leonard. And New Zealand were certainly looking to almost kill the French off, weren't they, in those first five or ten minutes of the, the second half. The French defence was fantastic, it really was. That's where I felt Heyman should have kicked it on. And then they had a huge overlap on the right-hand side. This ball gets recycled. And eventually, McAllister is the one on the right-hand side, just out of frame there, who took out his opposite number. He got ten in the sin bin. They got the penalty. They also got a try. There's McAllister about to walk. Wayne Barnes making the decision. Very interesting. Big moment, because I, they, I think they got ten points in that period, if you include the three points on the penalty. Yeah, they did indeed, and uh, that was a big moment, but a correct decision, and as you were saying earlier, all credit to uh, Wayne Barnes. I thought he did a terrific job. the conversion in off the post where we said things were swinging uh, I can now see uh, out on the ground Bernard Lapasse the French president all smiles and wonderful McAllister just missing that one and this was the move there's the little half break takes out two all black defenders that was crucial it took out McCaw as well and look at that swivel great call I presume from Jozo Great call, and you're not going to stop him from there, are you? And that, as it turned out, the winning kick. The conversion. An incredible victory.